Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today's video is going to be a continuation of part 4, where we added in some detail to the accessories of the character. In this part, we will manually retopologize the model so we can texture and rig the character for a pose. Because I'm only going to subtly pose the character and do some light, stylized texture painting, the retopology is very basic here. Just as a heads up, the retopology I do here is not optimal at all if you are wanting to use this in an animation or game setting. As I mentioned briefly in part 3, you can retopologize a model several different ways. There are built-in blender tools that do it automatically, like the voxel remesher and the quadraflow remesher. These are very fast, but perhaps don't do the best job. There is the built-in F2 add-on that has a couple of features that make things easier, but it is not automatic, so you still have to manually do it, which is time-consuming. There are third-party add-ons like Instant Mesh, which is free and automatic. But like the voxel and quadraflow remeshers, they don't do the cleanest job. And then there are the third-party add-ons like Speed Retopo and Retopo Flow, which are free and give better tools to help than, let's say, F2, but are not automatic, so it is still time-consuming. Up to you how you would like to proceed. I'll be touching on F2, Retopo Flow, and the voxel remesher in this video. I'll start off with a quick overview of how you might do this manually using Blender's built-in tools. I should say that I'm only going to retopologize the sculpted parts of the character. I'm not going to retopologize the hard surface armor or other accessories, as for the purposes of a simple still pose, it's probably overkill. The armor here, because of the many bevels I added, do make it a little bit problematic for UVs and rigging, but since I only intend to move the character just a bit for a still pose, I find that manually moving a lot of this stuff into place is a lot easier. Okay, so hiding all of the hard surface stuff, I'm going to add a single vertex and then turning on snap to face, project individual elements. I'm going to go up to the matte cap options and I'm going to turn on back face culling. Then I'm going to add a mirror modifier and then a shrink wrap modifier with the high poly sculpted object as the target. And then switching the mode to above surface. Now I'm going to extrude a face out and then turn on clipping under the mirror modifier. Now I'm going to add a material and then scroll down to the viewport display color, not the base color, and change it to something bright so we can see our retopology better. I'm going to shift N just to recalculate the normals, just in case they are for some reason flipped. Then back over to the modifier panel, I'm going to increase the offset of the shrink wrap modifier to something like 0.05 or 0.1, so that it sits above the high poly mesh a little bit better. So like I said before, Blender has a built-in add-on called F2 that helps a bit with retopology. I'd recommend enabling it if you're going to use this default method as it speeds things up a little bit. Okay, so with the F2 enabled, it has two main features. The first is when you select an edge like this and control plus right click, it will automatically create a quad from the edge. The second main feature is when you have a corner vertex like this. If you select it and press F, it will automatically create a face. One thing I forgot to show in the video here is you can also turn on auto merge in the options panel. If you're having trouble getting the vertices to merge automatically, make sure to adjust the auto merge threshold to something bigger. I go over this in the part 3 video at the 9 minute 50 second mark. I'll put a link below or in the cards if you didn't watch that video. Okay, so now I'm going to switch over to a free third-party add-on called Retopo Flow to do the retopology. 
This gives some extra tools like the F2 add-on to help with speeding things up, but ultimately it is not an automatic tool, so you're going to have to do this manually. You can download this from GitHub for free. It is also for sale on Blender Market if you'd like to support the developers. Here is a quick overview of the installation instructions if you want to try it out. I would highly recommend a popular YouTuber by the name of Danny Mac 3D. He has two awesome videos on retopologizing, one for the head and one for the body. I'll put a link in the description below to each. I try and use his methods here for the most part. In some areas I simplify though. His teaching style and pacing is excellent and the editing on his videos is really good for learning. Okay, so starting up RetopoFlow, I'm going to start with the contours tool to wrap the cylindrical parts of the body like the arms, fingers, torso, and legs. Again, you can do this manually with the F2 add-on. This just makes things a little bit faster. I try and keep the number of faces to 8 on the arms, legs, and fingers, and then 16 on the torso so that the legs can match up nicer. Retopo Flow has a nice tweak tool that works like a sculpting brush to gently move vertices around. If you're doing this manually with the F2 add-on, you could also switch to sculpt mode and use the smooth brush. After wrapping the cylindrical parts of the mesh, I go to the shoulder area where I create a loop of eight faces, two on each side, and then two on the top and bottom. Here I'm using the poly pen tool to quickly draw out claws. Now I'm going to create a sort of cap on the shoulder. I'm starting by drawing out six faces, three on the front and three on the back. Check that you have a loop going all around nicely like this and not spiraling everywhere. Now I'm creating a loop around the top and bottom of the shoulder, checking that the loop isn't spiraling again. Now I'm going to create a loop to match up with the cylindrical loops we did at the start. Here where the collarbone and shoulder meet, I'm going to create a little shape here like this and then creating faces on the chest and back so that again there are eight faces going around. Eight is a little bit of a magic number for me. 
Now just going to work on the rest of the chest and back and then down onto the legs and feet. I'm going to use most of the same techniques here, trying my best just to maintain quads and follow the edges of the sculpt as best as I can. Far from perfect, but again, for a subtle, still pose, this is usually good enough. Now working on the fingers. I try and add an edge where the fingers will crease and then have a control loop on each side for a better deformation. If you really want clean deformation for animation purposes, my understanding is that you can create triangles with knife cuts. But again, since that's not my end goal here, I keep it simple. Okay, with the body done, I'm going to tab out of Retopo Flow and back into Blender. I'm going to hide the high poly sculpt and then check that all the vertices along the mirror axis on my low poly are merged and not separated. Then I'll apply the mirror modifier. Then I'm going to add a multi-resolution modifier and increase the subdivisions to three or four however many your computer can handle. Now adding a shrink rep modifier and selecting the high poly sculpt as the target. The high poly sculpt does not need to be visible for the shrink wrap to work. Then changing the mode to project and then scroll down and tick the negative box as well. That should clean things up. and then now applying the shrink wrap modifier.
Now back into Retopoflow to retopologize the head. Here I'm using Danny Mac 3D's methods again as best as I can. Loops around the eyes, mandible, mouth, and ear to start. Then forming a band around the face from the forehead to the chin. Then a band around the back of the head. Then essentially filling in the gaps. I do end up with some triangles on the ears, but it won't be a big deal given the area doesn't deform much. Now same thing as before, applying the mirror modifier, then adding a multi-resolution modifier, and then a shrink wrap modifier, setting the mode to project, and ticking the negative box, and then applying the shrink wrap. Okay, another quicker automatic method I mentioned before you can use for retopologizing is using the voxel remesher. Here I'll use it on the beard, mustache, and eyebrows as an example. I'm going to select the high poly sculpted mesh, and then shift D to duplicate. I'm going to hide the high poly mesh. Now go into sculpt mode and change the voxel remesh size to something a lot bigger than the current voxel size. You can check the current voxel size by using the eyedropper tool. Here I increase to 0 0.5. You can see the new topology of the beard now. Now doing the same as before, I'm going to add a multi-resolution modifier and then a shrink wrap modifier. I repeat this for the mustache and the eyebrows. There is a similar automatic option in Blender called the Quadraflow Remesher as well. This can be found in the Object Data Panel on the right here, under the Remesh section. 
You can also access the voxel remesher here as well. Okay, now with the multi-resolution modifier, we can go in and sculpt the finer details like this if you'd like. I use a lot of crease and inverted crease brush here. I add in some fingernails for some more detail using just a simple plane and a solidify modifier. I position them in and then sculpt a little indent into the fingers. Sculpting in a little detail on the hair as well. Here I just use the draw sharp brush. You can play with different brush fall offs to customize the feel. So there you have it, retopology is done. That's a more time consuming, less fun part. Although I have strangely started to enjoy it a bit. The next part we will start UV unwrapping so that we can then start texture painting. Hit me up on Instagram or Facebook and show me what you have so far. Thanks for watching guys. I hope it helped and see you in the next one.